Um, Zach, you wore that shirt yesterday. Come on, are you professional? Look, look, I gotta take a shower in a bit. I didn't want to change this shirt into a clean shirt, making it dirty. I didn't want to take a shower, come back, record, because then my hair would be all wet. I wouldn't be able to wear my hat. So this is what we're doing. We're wearing the Avengers Infinity Four shirt again because it's a dope ass shirt. And uh, we're gonna talk about Nintendo games today. So <laughs> let's go. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the show where I'm gonna try not to complain today. Why did I write that in the script? Why? Because I've already complained. What? I, I, I'm giving up, I'm done. Done, the show is canceled. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Throwback Thursday. Happy Thursday. On Thursdays, we take a look at anything before the year 2000. Originally, it was 80s and 90s. I think I'm gonna take that back and just make it before the year 2000, because it's still technically a throwback. Not too long ago, Nintendo launched its very own Nintendo Switch Online service. While primarily this service was to function as a better way to play your Nintendo games online, as well as save your data to the cloud, which Apparently everyone had an opinion on it. They also started up their own Netflix type service for NES games. Right now there are currently a total of 26 games on the service, which is honestly not that much considering the NES library is over 800 games. But today we're gonna take a look at six of these games, all of which came out in the year 1985, the first year of the Nintendo Entertainment System. You can even play classic NES games anytime, anywhere on Nintendo Switch. When Nintendo first got into the video game industry, they started with arcade games. In fact, many of the games lost within the first couple years of the NES were actually arcade games first. In 1983, Nintendo got into the home video game market with the launch of the Famicom, which stands for Family Computer in Japan. That release was a success, and so in 1985, Nintendo would launch an American version called the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES for short. The NES would launch with a total of 17 titles, but for some reason, Nintendo Switch Online Library only has six of these launch titles in the current moment. So we're only gonna be talking about the ones that are available for the service. Now, when we're dealing with older games, especially launch titles on a 33-year-old system, there is a slight issue. Some of these games are simply not fun. In fact, I would probably have more fun watching a gameplay video of Bloodborne on YouTube on the Switch and pretending like I'm playing a Sony game on a Nintendo console. Holy sh! I can't believe I'm playing Bloodborne on the Switch. Oh, it's a YouTube video. Never mind. It, 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 did that sounds boring? If that sounds boring to you, let me tell you how boring baseball is. Like many of the older NES games, the first thing we see is a simple select screen. We can play one player, we can play two player, but I have no friends, so one player it is. After pressing start, we get to select our team. We have such beautiful choices as A, C, D, P, R, or Y. I don't know what these stand for, but I guess we're gonna go with D for disappointing. One of the other big problems about NES games is trying to figure out the controls. Sure, there's only two main action buttons, the A button and the B button, but these two buttons have to account for the entirety of the gameplay. And with a game like baseball, I ended up actually having to look up the instruction manual. By the way, I think one nice bonus for the Nintendo Switch Online service, considering we don't have all their games yet, including GameCube games, um, why not put in the original manual? I think that'd be a really great bonus. It obviously would help with control schemes, and if you're not gonna put GameCube games on there, you might as well do something different. Anyways, in the baseball instruction manual in the control section, it specifically says, Operating this controller for this game is fairly complicated. Read this instruction booklet carefully and practice operating the controller in order to master the game. In other words, having this manual is almost essential to figuring out how to play baseball. Not only that, but it also goes to say, use your imagination to develop winning strategies. Thanks Nintendo, I will use my imagination to play f***ing baseball. So, long story short, the controls are actually pretty complicated. I mean, there are 8 out of 14 pages dedicated to controls in this manual, and considering the fact that I'm not a baseball extraordinaire, I kind of just gave up on everything and decided I was going to actually try to play the game with as little information as I knew about it. 
And I can confirm, after 30 minutes of playing NES baseball, this is in fact a baseball game. Playing this game is about as engaging as watching an actual baseball game. You just sit there for way too long and wish you had the money to go get a hot dog. Yo, I got hot dogs! Whoa, the camera angle changed. Probably because I just had to use the phone to make a phone call. You're breaking the immersion! Next game, Excite Bike. Fortunately, right off the bat, Excite Bike is substantially easier to control. Though, like baseball and frankly most of these games on the list, it does have a pretty simple concept. Unlike baseball, it's actually kind of fun. For starters, there is a little bit of a jingle at the beginning, which is a lot more welcoming than the silence that baseball has. The goal in Excite Bite is also very simple. You press the A button and you avoid obstacles to make it to the finish line. In other words, it's like a Sonic level. It's not entirely easy though, you do have to manage your balance on the bike as you jump over ramps, and if you're not careful, you will fall off. And if you do fall off, you're about to experience one of the most embarrassing things in human history. This walk of shame right here. Now there are three different ways to play this game, which I thought was kind of dope. There's a selection A, which is a solo run, about how fast you can get to the end of the track. There's a selection B, which is a traditional race. It's definitely a little bit more difficult because you're constantly weaving around trying not to get hit by other motocross riders. And then there's the design mode, which allows you to create your own course. For an NES game, this is actually a very versatile design mode. I was actually quite surprised at how much you can do here. Forget about Mario Maker, it's all about that Excite Bike design mode. You can select a bunch of different obstacles to put on your track, put the finish line wherever you want, and test the track before you decide to save it. And that's probably one of the coolest things here is that there's an actual save your tracks function. The thing with Excite Bike is that every other motocross racing game in the future is going to be probably a better version of Excite Bike. It's not a bad game, it's actually quite good for what it is, it's just that I'm not going to have any drive to play Excite Bike anytime in the near future. Next up we've got Ice Climber, which I gotta be honest with you, I thought it was Ice Climbers with an S, but it's not. It's just, it's just Ice Climber, without the S. Most people know of Ice Climbers from the character roster in Super Smash Bros. Melee, but they did start in their own game. One of the positives for most of these NES games is that their music is pretty dope. I mean, it's 8-bit, but the Ice Climber tune is very catchy, actually. One of the negatives of most NES games is that the music is pretty short, and there's not a lot of it. The goal in Ice Climber is, again, simple. You climb up mountains. If you hit start immediately, you start on mountain one. It's very easy, there's a few enemies that you can strike down with your hammer, and once you get to the top, there's a quick little bonus stage where you can get eggplants for extra points. If you don't want to start from mountain one every time you start this game, even though let's be honest, you're probably only ever going to play Ice Climbers like one or two times in your entire life, you can hit the up and down arrows on the D-pad to switch through different mountain stages. There are a total of 32 stages, the higher the number, the higher the difficulty. I wish I could say that Ice Climber is worth playing due to its charm. I mean, visually, it's one of the better NES games that I've talked about today. The stages are pretty well designed, and even the enemies, especially since one of them is a polar bear with sunglasses, like, that's kind of cool. But there's a big, 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 big problem with this game. Its jump mechanic is super weird. If you're facing one way, the jump does this one thing, and then if you're facing the other way, the jump does a different thing. It's never consistent, and oftentimes you're just gonna find yourself falling back down the mountain because of like the wonky jump mechanic. And unfortunately, because of this, I've only probably played like 30 minutes of Ice Climber in my entire life. And now, before we get to undoubtedly the best game in today's episode, the game that I talked about on Monday as well, Super Mario Brothers. First, we're gonna do a one-two punch of this duo of games, soccer and tennis. I innovating titles, Nintendo. You just, you're just doing great with the titles, man. In soccer, you get to do something that you don't get to do in real life. You get to pick the country you wanna be from. Today, we're gonna pick Japan, but that's only because North Korea isn't an option. My skill level is gonna be a one, and we're gonna go for a 15 on the halftime, because it's the shortest number, and I'm assuming that, that has to do with how long the game is going to be. 
And after playing one full soccer game, I can confirm that just like baseball, this is definitely a game about soccer. And much like real life soccer, I'm a lot better at being a goalie than kicking a ball across the field. Meanwhile, in tennis, it's tennis, everybody. You smack a ball across the net to your opponent who smacks it back at you and then you try to smack it back at them. Surprisingly though, this is the most fun game out of the sports titles that I've talked about today, which, you know, isn't really that big of an accomplishment, but I will say that tennis handles the game of tennis quite well. Moving your character on the board is actually very satisfying. It's the easiest of the sports titles to grasp in terms of controls, considering you're not moving an entire team and you're just moving one person instead. But while it was easier to play, that doesn't mean that I did better than I did in the other games. In fact, I lost a few times. And the game kept telling me that I was at fault for something. What do you mean fault? What did I do? But if there's one thing I've learned today, it's that if a game looks like a boring sports game made in 1985, then it's probably a boring sports game made in 1985. Baseball, soccer, and tennis are not fun. You might be able to get some enjoyment out of tennis, but like if you're gonna play sports, you might as well just go play the real thing or, you know, play one of the modern sports games, I guess. There's a lot more involved gameplay. So I I just don't understand why Nintendo thinks you're going to want to play soccer on a $300 console. That's what I don't understand. And before we go, we still got one game on the docket, and that's Super Mario Brothers. We talked about it on Monday's episode, but I just got to say, out of all the games on this list to play, like Super Mario Brothers is the one to play. It's it's probably the only game that you should play on the Nintendo Switch Online service. If you haven't already played it before, of course most people have played it before, you, you should probably play it. It's not only an important piece of video game history, but it still holds up to this day. And what's even better, unlike all these other games I talked about today, like Super Mario Brothers is just a full gaming experience. It has a story, even though if it's not that much, it's definitely better than a Scythe story, which is nothing. Um, it, it also was the grandfather of the platforming genre. The music is on the edge of brilliance and the level design is still great to this day. Super Mario Brothers also does a really good job at pacing difficulty with its first level teaching almost everything you need to know about the game without you needing to read a manual like I had to do with baseball. The controls are simple enough allowing you to get a grasp on Mario's movements in just a few seconds. The enemy designs are now considered iconic. There are a multitude of secrets that allow you to beat the game in just a matter of five minutes. We also get the introduction of Bowser, Toad, and Princess Peach. Honestly, I can't even make that many jokes about this game because it's objectively good and it's the only one of these games worth playing in 2018. At the end of the day, I am glad that Nintendo is trying out a Netflix of games service. I do like quite a few NES titles and having the opportunity to play Nintendo's classic games not only on my TV, but on the go is extremely exciting. The problem that I have right now is that I just spent an afternoon playing one fourth of the games available on this service and only one of those games, Super Mario Brothers, is worth playing. And I've played it before. Even though Excite Bike can be kind of fun, there's just no reason for me to play more of it in the future. Ice Climber has a fundamental problem with its jump mechanic, and the other three games we looked at today are sports titles that like nobody should play. Nobody should play these games. I would understand why Nintendo would include these sports titles if the entire NES library of 800 games was available throughout the system, but it makes no sense to me when an entire one third of the entire library here are sports games that nobody wants to play. All in all, there are a couple of other games on this library that I'm looking forward to checking out because I've never beaten them, but we'll have to take a look at those next batch of games on volume two. That's right, this is a, this is a two-parter, potentially a 10-parter, we'll see, of the NES Switch online service. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Did you enjoy this video and maybe you're thinking, hey Zach, I wanna know how to do the things you did in the video like video editing or thumbnail designs. Well, you're in luck because today I'm introducing you to Skillshare, or maybe you've heard about Skillshare before, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it anyways. In today's world, everybody wants to be a YouTuber, but they may not know how to develop the proper skills that it takes to put out quality content on the regular. You know, to please the almighty YouTube algorithm. You could be like me who took seven years of hard work and dedication to learn how to edit videos at least decently, or 
You can use Skillshare, which is an online learning platform with tons of classes taught by some of the best teachers in their respective fields. In other words, if you want to learn photography, why not learn it from someone who's successful at photography? If you want to learn video editing, web development, writing, or more, Skillshare is the place to go. It's affordable, it's useful, and if you use the link in the description box below, you can get two free months. That's right, two completely free months, 60 days, completely free on me. So go children, go learn to be a better YouTuber than me. You can do it. That's all the time we have for today. If you want GameCube games on the Nintendo Switch Online service, hit that like button. If you unironically enjoy NES baseball, you can hit that dislike button. Go ahead and subscribe if you like the show, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.